Sally? <laughs> I know, you're just so cute. All right, it's Memorial Day weekend I'm here at Horn Island. I managed to get some time off, and Scott was like, hey, let's go sailing. And I'm trying to get out here every year this weekend anyway with a bunch of other crazy drunks trying to fish our lives away. Anyway, medicine follows you everywhere. <laughs> this guy basically had uh, bilateral antibrachial fractures to the radius and ulna. Rumor has that they were actually healing, were, were healing incorrectly. Um, this is, uh, actually, it's not even my case at all, so, so if anybody's going to have any comments, just remember, it's not me. <laughs> but anyway, we can make this a small lecture about the difference between pins and plates and splints. So, this guy obviously has been splinted on both legs. The bad news about splints are they tend to carry a lot of bacteria with them. We don't change them frequently enough. Uh, our patients can't tell us when they hurt or when they've got too many lesions. So if you're going to use a splint, you have to be prepared to pay for lots of bandage changes, probably lots of sedation because you don't want them wiggling and squirming while you're doing your bandage changes. And then from there on top of that, you know, you get the secondary antibiotics and everything else to, to battle the infection. Then there's pinning. I'm a big fan of pinning. I would uh, actually put in externals on this guy's leg, put four pins in a, probably the radius and probably four pins in the ulna if it wasn't very stable. That would give this guy legs to stand on. Of course, he would have the sexiest stainless steel stuff hanging out of his leg. <laughs> Looked like tackle. Hey, not here on the water, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, It'd be a big bass lure. Yeah! And then there's plating. The reason I don't like plating is if a plate goes bad, if one of those screws gets infected or something goes wrong with one of those screws, the infection will travel along that whole plate and that whole bone will be infected which is why I like the, uh, the pins more specifically. So right now what we're doing is this guy's actually waiting to see how well he's going to heal in the next week or so to see if he's going to need plating. Um, and uh, so that's their, their referring doctor's uh, favorite way of fixing things. And uh, anyway, back to the, the pinning. If a pin were to get infected, you can just remove that pin and move it an inch over and you could actually save the whole bone and never have to worry about it. Um, so you can control infections and they'll be able to walk on it while it's, while it's healing. And again, plating, you have to go down to the bone, clear the tissue away from the bone, which may compromise the, uh, the blood supply and the innervation. So again, I'm a big fan of pinning. So I will probably won't see this guy till next year at the rate that we're going. <laughs> but, but I may ask my friends just how well this guy's doing. So anyway, more fodder for the fire. Later. All right. At the time of taking these videos of the dog on the boat, I had not seen the x-rays. Wow. I, uh, if you know, tissue contraction is, is a terrible, terrible thing when it comes to orthopedics. And the only two things that will fix that are some IM pinning, uh, external pinning, or plating. Uh, again, using splints does not control this in any way, shape, or form. So I guess that's one of the reasons I try to steer away from, from splinting. But I didn't mention that earlier, but now that I've seen the x-rays, wow, had to mention it. Okay, that's it for now. Later.